Hi, everyone. Welcome to Michelle's Inspiration Hour podcast, where every story is a wellspring of inspiration. I'm your host, Michelle, and today we have an extraordinary guest joining us, Cindy Van Arnhem. With a passion for dismantling outdated systems, Cindy ignites emerging entrepreneurs to embrace their boundless potential. Through quantum neurology and universal laws, she equips healers and visionaries with the tools to master themselves, creating a bedrock for enduring success, even a rapidly evolving world. As we navigate this paradigm shift, Cindy reminds us that empowerment is our compass through the storm. It's time to seize control of your business and chart a new course. Having triumphed over her own shadows, including addiction and trauma, Cindy is a beacon of empowerment. Join us as she shares her insights as a universal laws coach, quantum neurologist, and more. Let's unlock your limitless power together. So I am so excited to have her. I'm going to bring her on. How are you doing, Cindy? I am so glad that you are here today. All right, Cindy, I am so excited to hear about your story, about your life story, about where you are now. And a lot of people don't know that I was actually on your podcast. Okay, absolutely loved our conversation. But since then, you have really changed direction in your life. Yes, you your vision has changed. And to me, I tell people, you know, even though it's uncomfortable, you need to change that vision and go with your intuition. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and tell us how you, where you were before you changed that direction and why you changed it. Mm, Yeah. So I started my business way back in 2016. And at that time I met my spiritual mentor and throughout the course of working with her, I fell in love with her as a person, as a coach, as a teacher. And so we ended up coming in together as a business partnership. And so I was helping her build her business. And I had big dreams and big visions for what was possible for her because she was an incredible teacher. Um, And then in the fall of 2022, I started noticing things in the relationship and in the business that just didn't sit right with me. Um, One of my top values is authenticity and integrity. And I was not seeing those show up for me. And so it started to feel really uncomfortable. You know, when you do things out of your own value system, all of a sudden we're like, "Mm -mm, this doesn't feel good. And us as humans, you know, we love to be attached to the way things are, but I'm really good at the pivot. And I trust myself because of the work that I've done with my numerology and universal laws. And so in sitting with all of this and realizing this doesn't feel good, this is so out of alignment, this is not okay for me and my own well-being, So I made a decision in January of 2023 to burn it all down. I literally just quit and walked away. And on the day that I quit, I also bought my first house. (laughs) Yeah, that's what people do, you know, whenever you're changing careers and everything. Let's buy a house. Yeah, right? Because that's normal. (laughs) (laughs) But good for you because you knew that it was going to be okay. Yes. And I think one of the biggest things is, you know, us as humans, we like to look back and we like to regret and we, we, I mean, we do need to grieve. We do need to look at those things. And, you know, that, that period of time of letting go of that relationship was really hard. Not only were we business partners, but we were very close friends and that whole friendship fell apart as well. And so there was grief. There were things to navigate in that. But one of the things that we do as humans is we keep looking backwards And we focus on all the things that we don't love and that we hate and that we're grieving and we forget to look forward to what's next. And so there was no mistake that I bought a house on the same day that I burnt it all (laughs) down because I was focused on what's next. And I am so flipping lit up right now about what I'm creating and what's coming. Not only did we buy a house, I got engaged. I built a new business from the ground up and I'm moving forward. So it's really exciting. Oh, well, see, and that, and you can tell, I mean, when you're talking about it, you just light up yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I do want to bring up and, and I do want to know where you are now, but that plaque behind you where it says boss, which that yeah. means that you are the one in control. 
<laughs> yes. You are the boss. And, yeah. and I think you said a lot of good things that people need to know because it really is difficult to make changes. It's, it's hard to make that leap of faith, I guess you could say, yeah. because, you know, you bought that house. And to me, that's awesome because you knew it was going to be okay. Mm-hmm. You have that vision you carried mm-hmm. on and you, you're a strong personality at that. Yes. <laughs> and, and so, and I think people can find that courage and move forward. Hi, if you are being inspired by this episode, please share with somebody that will also be inspired. We are here to change the world. All right, let's get back to the conversation. All right. So Cindy, tell us now, since you decided to burn all that down, what you, what your road is leading to now and tell us about everything that you have learned at mm-hmm. this point and all of your titles. I know there's so many, oh my gosh, so many. So right now I'm really working with healers and coaches to master their mind and their heart and develop the business skills required to create sustainable revenue. Now I use all of my different modalities to help people with that, but I'm always adamant. Nobody's buying your modality. They're buying your energy and wanting to work with you. They're investing in working with you. So I can list all of my certifications. I will do that <laughs> for your audience because um, I've got a lot, right? And yes, I'm, absolutely. I'm a- I'm a conscious channel, so I channel the numbers, and I also channel with the law of divine timing. I am a certified universal laws coach, so I work with over 25 different universal laws. I am a master numerologist, and I work with two different systems of numerology, one of which there's only a 1,000 people in the world who do what I do, so it's very unique. Um, And I am an intuitive business strategist, so like I said, I work with the healers and the coaches. I'm very passionate about the eradication of spiritual poverty. So I am a wealth activator. Uh, I could go on. I used to be a virtual assistant. So technology comes easy to me. Um, So I help people with the simple systems, the workflows, the checklists. When you come to work with me, I literally just say, here's your sandbox to play in. Plug your intuition into it. Go. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I absolutely love that because I know So many people that are in the healing business into spirituality, you know, they can't get money, you know, and okay. So the first thing that they need to get over, which, you know, my, my spiritual teacher, Lisa Williams always says, you, you want to help people, you know, Mm -hmm. that's in your heart. You're an empath. So you got to get over that. You've got to start charging for your businesses. Oh my gosh. (laughs) And so I think your service is so needed. Mm-hmm. So, so if somebody is brand new, that's coming into the business, okay. Mm-hmm. And, and is wanting to make money. What, what is the first thing that you do to help them? Yeah. Well, we got to work with the mind and the heart first, because right. if you are plugging yourself into strategy without first knowing who you are and what you want, why you want it, it's going to be really hard and it's not going to work. There's got to be that alignment there. And you've got to be able to trust yourself as a business owner. You have to be able to trust yourself. So we start there. We start with self-mastery so that when you're plugging into the strategy, you're doing it your way and not the way that some cookie cutter some system right. told you to do it. That's really important. You know, there's a lot of noise in the online space that says you need to do this, 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 that, and everything else. And then we're all overwhelmed. Well, first of all, you didn't get into this business to learn marketing and sales, but you need to learn marketing and sales, but you've (laughs) got to do it your way. It's so important. So mastering the mind and the heart is first. Then I teach people consistent content because social media is a very powerful tool for your business. And most of the people that are using it are doing it wrong. And so I teach you how to use it in a way that really supports your business so that you're not on Facebook all day long. You only have to post once a day, not 15 times a day. (laughs) And I teach you what to create so that it's not, you know, it's not cookie cutter. It's not vanilla. You stand out from the crowd and it's your voice. It's your self-expression. 
But not only that, I teach you how to express yourselves in the sales conversations, in the marketing, in all your sales pages, all of that stuff. I teach you what to say in your own voice. And then from there, you need a plan. <laughs> you really do. Because <laughs> what I also see is because we're intuitive, we get all these ideas and these downloads. And then what we're in, what I end up, hap- what ends up happening is people are like flinging things at the wall in the hopes that something will stick. There's no actual plan. There's no sustainability. And it's like, oh, I'm going to throw up an offer. And then nobody buys it because there's no system or structure behind it. And so I bring in those pieces to help you understand the very simple basics of it. You don't need a website to make money online. Let's start right. there. Right, <laughs> right. It's kind of it's yeah. kind of one of those traditional things. Like you said, you know, you don't have to follow the traditional way to make marketing and business money. Yes. You know, you've exactly. got to think differently because things are always changing. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and like, just like what we've been talking about, we always get back into what is familiar, mm-hmm. what we're used to, you know, what we follow. So yes. I, I totally agree. And I love that you said that you don't have to post on Facebook like 15 times <laughs> because those people that do, I tend to say, I don't want to see any more posts. Yeah. I've had enough of you. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and actually what happens, I did a, an experiment with this just to prove to myself that this was real. So, you know, all the marketing gurus out there, they say content creation, content creation, post everywhere and post all the time. So at one point I was creating five pieces of content for every single day. Now I do a lot of repurposing and I've got mm-hmm. systems in place. So don't think that you got to right. like burn the candle <laughs> at both ends. I don't. I work yeah. maybe 30 hours a week during a busy week, but mm-hmm. I was posting all of this content and I was getting no engagement. So I went to my business mentor and I said, am I posting too much? So we did an experiment and I dialed it back to one piece of content, valuable, amazing right. piece of content every day. Yeah. And my engagement shot through the roof. I oh, was wow. saturating my own feed with too much content. So dial it back enough. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, no, I was. <laughs> you're perfect. No, no, no. I was. I was going. Yay! I didn't want to interrupt at all because I think that is fantastic, and I absolutely love that. And with the website, you know, that's where my familiar, you know, piece my normalization is. Mm-hmm. Um. So, but it also, you know, with my website because you know it's familiar. That's where I send my clients to, to yeah. schedule things yeah. because I don't have, you know, like a secretary. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's the only reason why I'm paying for my website. Other yeah. than that, I'd probably ditch it, you yeah, know, and so, I know there's different ways that you yeah. can do that. I see so many, what I see happening so often is because we've got this fear of putting ourselves out there. We don't want to sell. We don't want to come off as this used car salesman. We don't want to be sleazy. Um, So we distract ourselves with the quote unquote busy work that makes us feel productive, but isn't actually moving the needle forward in our business. And Mm -hmm. many people think that that's a website. Well, I'll make money when my website's built. I'll get my website done and then I can go and sell, right? Well, the fastest path to revenue is sales and you don't need a website to sell something. You need three things to start a business in the online space. Number one, you need a way for people to book a call with you. So in the beginning, that can be manual back and forth. Let's pick a time. Eventually, you need some sort of system, some sort of call booking system like you suggested. Uh, I suggest Acuity for everything. It's the most intuitive, easy to use system. Um, But there's lots of different options out there. You also need a a way to get paid. Well, PayPal has created that for us. So has Stripe. And for those of you who are concerned about the fees, it's the price of doing business. Build the fees into your pricing. Um, (laughs) So you need a way to book a call. You need a way to get paid. And you need a way to communicate with people. That's called Zoom. (laughs) Get on Zoom and meet (laughs) with your people, right? Absolutely. Um, And using Facebook Messenger is a really powerful way of communicating with your people as well. Get in the DMs. It's not greasy and slimy if you do it the right way. This business, this coaching business is relationship building. It's all about relationships. 
And you can't build a relationship if you don't talk to people. So go talk to right. people. <laughs> right. And you know, and I love that because the fact because of the podcast, I feel, and I think that's why I love my creator, you know, creating yeah. a podcast is because of the connections, mm -hmm. talking to people, you know, brainstorming what we could do, like what I'm doing with you right now. Yeah. And so I know that you have your own podcast as well. What is the name of it? And what is the purpose of it? Yeah, you know what I love? Again, another pivot. So when you yes. came on my podcast, it was called Rebel Radio, and I was interviewing guests around the topic of self-mastery. Um, it has now been rebranded as of January, of course, because I burned everything down. Um, <laughs> it's, <hard> it, <laughs> it's now called the Life at Full Blast podcast, and it's my voice because I had a lot of guests, amazing people. I had incredible conversations, but I realized that I have things to say. And so the podcast is very unique, actually. It is a weekly episode. It is for the healers and coaches, but it's more of a motivational, inspirational style show. And it's actually based on the numerological influences of the week that it comes out on. Now, oh, it's timeless. It can work for any, any time of the week, any time of the year. But if you listen to it on the week that it comes out, it's really going to hit home because it's based on what's happening right then and now. Of course. I love yeah. it. <laughs> so that's where you're using your talent as well. Yes. It's because you can predict and know when things are good to go and when yes. you kind of need to, you know, wait yes. along the line. So yes. your podcast, is it on Apple? Where can people it's listen? It's literally everywhere. Yeah. Okay, good. It's everywhere. Okay. Uh, fastest place to find anything that I do is my website. <laughs> I have a website. I know. <laughs> um, I fullblastcoaching.com. Yeah. You can find my podcast from there. That would be the fastest place to find it, but it's on it. Yeah. And even though we're talking about uh, websites, I know exactly what you mean, because a lot of people will not move forward unless they have a website or they can't afford it right now. Yeah. And like you said, just move forward with it. I yeah. do have um, another question about a lot of my clients that come to me. They're mm -hmm. always saying, you know what, I want to go into the spiritual business, but I'm making money right now, but I'm not making money in my spiritual business. And I, you know, want to burn that. <laughs> Uh -huh. Like what you're saying, burn that other job. So yeah. what would you recommend for them to do? Yeah, well, you can absolutely make money doing what you love. Let's start there. Okay. And it comes from a place of really knowing who you are and what you want to experience and having trust and faith in that. So, you know, numerology can really support in that. That was my biggest growth was looking at my chart and see it's like the best personality assessment you could ever get. And understanding, you know, my thought patterns and how I accept things, how I integrate things, that really helped me to just kind of take the leap and to trust myself. But it really just requires a leap of faith. You've got to just at one point decide, you know what, I'm doing this. Now, don't quit your job until your business is making money. I usually don't right. recommend that. But it's not going to require... 80 hours a week to build your business. If you do it right and you get the foundation built the right way, you can do it as a side gig to begin with as you develop that trust, as you take a little bit of a leap and the next leap and the next leap. And the next thing you know, you've got sustainable revenue and you can leave that nine to five in the dust. Right. Love it. Love it. Absolutely <laughs> love it. And I love that you said that you're following your passion. You know, you're following that intuition. Um, okay. Um, so if I came to you and I said, I need inspiration, mm -hmm. I need, I need some type of inspirational statement or something. I'm having this horrendous week. <laughs> mm -hmm. What would you say? What, mm -hmm. what is something that inspires you that a quote or something? Well, this is going to be an answer that most of your audience and probably you won't expect. Oh, okay. <laughs> Inspiration is a lifestyle choice. Inspiration is an inside job, the inspiration. And so we are constantly looking for inspiration outside of ourselves. We go out into the trees. We go out onto the beach. We look for quotes, right? We're always right. looking for it outside of ourselves. But inspiration comes from within. It is in co-creation. If you look at the word inspiration, in, inward, spirit, with God, source, universe, whatever label you choose to give that. And then the shun is the action part. 
So you've got to have the intention. You've got to know what it is that you're looking for. So I want inspiration. You can do some breath work, do some yoga, meditate, whatever it is that you want to do to slow down and listen to spirit and then take action on that thing. And sometimes that thing doesn't make any sense because our ego wants to like get things done off the to-do list and inspiration is saying, go take a nap. And you're like, yeah, I don't have time for that. I'll do that later, (laughs) right? (laughs) So for me, I always say inspiration is a choice. You get to decide if you're willing to slow down and listen and find out what the next step is. And from there, take action upon it. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. All right. Is there anything that we did not talk about that Mm. you want to talk about before we bring the wheel on? Yes, I really want to bring in the the law of divine timing. Um, Because I work with all these universal laws, the law of divine timing is one that is misconstrued a lot. We I hear this happen in the spiritual space a lot of, oh, well, it's all in divine timing. Well, if the universe wants me to experience it, then I will. And the divine timing cycle, actually, there's six stages to it. Um, And in those six stages, there is one particular point where you decide that you will experience it. Instead of waiting for the universe to hand it to you on a silver platter, we must make the decision because we are in co-creation with the universe. We're not these weird alien beings wandering around in a universe that we're not connected to. We are the universe. And so we've got to work together with the universe. Yes, there's 99.999% of the stuff we can't see. We can't perceive it. But the decision point is energetic, not mental. And so when we make that decision, we're actually activating every single cell in the body to co-create with the universe and make it happen. And so it's not about, you know... Well, if it's meant to be, no, it is meant to be. (laughs) If you decide you're going to experience it. (laughs) Absolutely. That's where you get a lot of the spiritual people going, well, you know what? My clients will come to me, you know, the energy, the universe will send me my clients. But And you know what? Yes, that actually happens. It happens all the time when you've got your energy at the right quote unquote, vibe, right? When you're running the right frequency, but a lot of that frequency has to do with decision. And I think we've got this weird balance happening right now where we've gone from crazy masculine energy of go, 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 hustle, grind. We've seen the shift now over to the feminine side where it's meditate and spend time in the garden and it's beautiful, right? But we can't leave masculine energy behind. We've got to take action. It's not, I mean, yes, clients will just come to you. That does happen. But you've got some things to do, right? You can't just be like, oh, clients will just come to me and then not have anywhere for them to go, right? Right. There's still work to do. So we've got to find this balance between the masculine and feminine, where it's a lot of meditating time in the garden, looking at butterflies, and there's a time and a place for action and doing the thing. (laughs) Absolutely. And I love the combination. Yes. You yes. know, the the male and the female. Yeah, absolutely. The energy together, because yeah. it just it really makes makes. Um, and that's all like a whole mindset, you know, it that is. people yeah, grow up with belief systems. Yeah. So they don't, you know, they're not yeah. exposed to it. So, you know, that's absolutely. why we need your services. Well, I mean, I grew up on a farm with work ethic, very masculine <laughs> energy, true. right? Like go, go, go. You get up at right. five in the morning and you go to bed at nine o'clock at night, right? But yeah. this is, again, universal law. There's a law of polarity where you must have one and the other. You can't just operate on one. You can't have light without dark. You can't have day without night. You can't have good without bad. Well, you can't have a business without masculine and feminine you gotta have both yeah I love it and if and really and if somebody does not know about business they don't know where to start you've got to reach out and do your research (laughs) you know so that you can get some guidance and you know because you know a business cannot start off And you got to consider it. I love what you said earlier that it is a business. It's not just a spiritual business or a spiritual um, goal. It is a 
a full business. business that you're looking at. <laughs> yeah. If, if you're if you're wanting to make money using your gifts, then you have a business. If you're wanting to just give all your gifts away and not make money, then it's a hobby and go for it, but know the difference between the two. And if you want to have a business, you have to have support. I have never, ever, ever tried tried to do anything in my business without some sort of mentorship. Because we get caught up in our own heads and we can't see the forest for the trees. And you've got to have somebody who's mirroring back to you, your thoughts, your language, your beliefs, so that you can make the changes that you need to in your business. And I love that because don't you think even the people who have been in the same business forever need to have mentors? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would never try to run my business without having mentorship. Um, At this point, it's not about learning new skills. In the beginning, you're learning new skills. You also need that self-mastery. But once you've got the skills in place, then you just need somebody to talk to once in a while who gets the industry, who understands your patterns and your limiting beliefs and all the other stuff, and will call you out on it when you're holding yourself back. (laughs) That's true. Kind of like, come on, you need to yeah. move, yeah, <laughs> take exactly. more action or an idea that you didn't even think of. Exactly. Because sometimes we get wrapped up and we get obsessed and then you can't really think about, and the ego gets in the way. Yeah. And then that way we're, we're not really thinking. So I agree totally that you definitely need to have a mentor whenever you're, especially starting out, but also as you're going along as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Are you ready for the wheel? I am always ready. I was born ready. (laughs) All right. All right. So so I'm going to share the screen, but sometimes my um, guests will see it and I won't for some reason. So, but I I can still spin it. Okay. Can you see it? I can see it. All right. I'm going to spin it. (laughs) At least you get it. (laughs) You won't win a million dollars. Oh, I love this. Favorite childhood memory. Yes. Oh Oh my gosh. So many. Let's see. Okay. That's good. (laughs) So many. You know, my childhood was really good. Like I grew up in a farm and, you know, I was surrounded by chickens and horses and cows. Okay. Yeah. I was just, I was talking for a minute for that memory to come through my intuition to go. Here it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we had a herd of cattle when I was growing up and we bred our cows for meat. So we would ship okay. our calves off for the, the meat industry. Yeah. And so we had a couple of bulls that were in a different pasture. Well, these bulls were very, very friendly. And, you know, if you ever watch rodeo and you watch bull riding, it's dangerous. It's one of the most dangerous sports in the yeah. world. I think it's, yes. I watch them and I'm like, what are you doing? That's not smart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and people like adrenaline more than I do. But when I was a kid, I used to walk up to these bulls in the pasture. They'd be laying down and I would walk right up to them and climb on their back. Was I allowed to do that? No. Oh my gosh. But I did anyway. Um, and I, his, his name was Calhoun. He was the coolest dude. And I would just go and lay on his back in the middle of the field and just hang out and watch butterflies. You know what? And that says a lot about you. And, you know, I live in Texas, so I understand about the bull riding. I mean, you know, (laughs) I would go to all the rodeos and everything. Um, But yeah, but that says a lot about you and your energy Mm -hmm. that the bull allowed you to do this, you know? And it's almost like, because I know like horses are the same way that if you're comfortable, they'll be comfortable around you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Everything in our experience is a mirror. So our animals mirror back to us our own energy, right? Which uh, uh, is one more point about your business. If you want people to invest in working with you, everything's a mirror, go invest in yourself. Oh, I love it. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I absolutely love it. Okay. So before we go, Mm -hmm. I want you to think of, you've already given inspiration, but what is one word that you want to leave everybody with? Mm -hmm. I know it's hard. (laughs) One word, courage. 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 Oh, I love that. All right, guys, you have heard it from Cindy. I mean, again, if you are starting a business or you want to start a business, 
find the courage, find that in you. (laughs) Always think the bear, you know, (laughs) get started. And if you need to have help, find a business mentor. And that is what Cindy does. So find somebody that speaks your language, someone that you're comfortable with, so that you can show the world who you truly are. Hmm. All right. Thanks for listening. And I will see you next week.